Hi, I'm Travis Elliott with National Control Devices, and today I'm going to help you get your IoT Edge computer out of the box and working for the first time. Now, the IoT Edge computer is one of the most powerful devices available in our enterprise line of products. We're extremely proud of what a quality product it is and the capability it has, but also the ease of use of the device. It offers cellular, Wi-Fi, and Ethernet interfaces, so you can connect it to the Internet almost anywhere in the world. It also has interfaces that allow you to locally log data on the device. So, you know, for a data logging application where maybe this thing's located somewhere where you can't access the Internet, you can actually have it log data to a database right on the device on a USB thumb drive or solid-state hard drive. Node-RED offers Node-RED Dashboard, which is a really cool UI that you can add widgets to to see live data from your devices. So, you know, you could add a widget to, you know, monitor the temperature and the humidity, maybe the air quality in your environment. There's so many things that you can do with this. You can connect it to almost any cloud platform, AWS, Azure, UbiDots is a personal favorite of mine because it's so easy to use and they're just great people. But you can connect it to, you know, any cloud platform you can think of. There's a lot of powerful things you can do with Node-RED. So let's get into this thing and take a look at the hardware and see what this thing's all about. Now looking at the device here, we can see that there's two antennas. One of these, this one here, is the 900 megahertz wireless interface that allows it to connect to our enterprise line of wireless sensors. The second antenna here is the LTE cellular interface antenna. This will be included if you purchase the device with the cellular connectivity option. On the other side, we can see the hardware connection ports. Here we've got Ethernet, USB. This is a slot for your uh, SIM card for your LTE network connection. We have a USB port here that allows you to connect external storage like thumb drives or even solid state drives. We have an open slot here to allow it to directly connect to our I2C line of products. And then finally, we've got the power supply connection, which is a 12 volt uh, power supply connection. A 12 volt DC power supply is included with the device. It has a wider operating range than 12 volts, but 12 volts DC is the nominal operating voltage for the device. If we take a quick glance inside the device, we'll see that there's a screen here to give us some heads-up display information, like the uh, IP address of the device on the network. Over here, we can see the wireless 900 megahertz module that is receiving data from the wireless sensors. And we can also actually see the MAC address printed here on top of this module. So that's about it as far as the physical traits of the device. It comes in this really nice enclosure. So let's get this thing powered up and see what it can do. Now for my application today, I'm going to be using Ethernet. So the first thing I'm going to do is plug in my Ethernet cable. Next, I'll connect the power supply. We'll see LEDs begin to flash inside the device. What we're going to do is we're going to wait until we have information on this screen. So here we'll see I have device uh, information up on the screen. I don't know how well it's going to come through on the camera, probably not well, but it's going to tell me the AP IP address. This device actually acts as a soft Wi-Fi AP uh, so that I can actually directly connect to it from my computer. And that allows me to access the web interface inside of the device to configure it. The next thing that it lists in my device is the Ethernet IP address. <clears throat> That'll tell me what IP address I can go to on the local area network to access the device. Next, it's going to tell me that Wi-Fi is down. And lastly, LTE just has a bunch of blank lines. That's because I have Ethernet enabled and I have Wi-Fi and LTE disabled. If you enable Wi-Fi, then you should see an IP address listed there if the device is correctly connected to your Wi-Fi network. For LTE, if you have the cellular module set up in your device, then you'll see the IP address for the device on the LTE network. 
So let's go ahead and open a web interface to this device so we can see inside a little bit further. I'm going to open a web browser on a computer that's connected to the same local area network as this device. Now for this setup, I recommend connecting this device to an Ethernet network initially. That's going to allow you to access it easily and it's going to give it a good internet connection for downloading any libraries that you may need for your application. So let's open up the web interface and see what's going on. So here on my computer, I'm just going to open my web browser and I'm going to enter the IP address that's listed on the device's screen next to Ethernet, which in my case is 192.168.88.29. And here we'll see the web interface for the IoT Edge computer. There's a lot of different things that we can do. You know, we can change passwords. Um, we can reset network parameters. We can write things on the, on the screen on the device, change the color of the LEDs if we wanted to for some reason, restart the monitoring service, reboot the device, shut down the device. Uh, as I mentioned, this device actually shows up as a soft AP uh, that you can connect to. So right here it's telling me that this is its name and if I look at the sticker on top of the device I'll notice that the device's MAC address ends in E972. This is, uh, allows you to know which IoT Edge computer you're connecting to if you have more than one. So if we were to take a look at available Wi-Fi networks that my computer can see, if I scroll down I'm going to see NCD Gateway E972. So I could actually connect to this device's Wi-Fi network and I can access this web interface. That would allow us to manually set the Wi-Fi network we want it to connect to, maybe turn Wi-Fi off and turn Ethernet on, just anything that you really need to do. That soft AP interface is going to allow you to manually connect to the device no matter what. So next we can take a look at the network tab. Here on the Network tab, there's a lot of different information. For one, you'll see Target Endpoint, Google.com. This is the website that the device is going to use to check to see whether or not it has internet connectivity. You can change this to whatever you want. Next, we're going to see Ethernet, Wi-Fi, and LTE. I'll see here that Ethernet is up and Wi-Fi and LTE are disabled, which is reflected by the screen on the device. If I wanted to connect to Wi-Fi, then I could click here and I could enable Wi-Fi right here. But before I do that, what I would want to do is scroll down here under Network Interfaces, open up Wi-Fi, and enter in the information for my Wi-Fi network, like its SSID, the network name, and the uh, password for connecting. I would also want to set the protocol. Most generally, we recommend DHCP, but in some instances, you may need to set a static IP address on the device, and that setting is available here. So I would want to set that information, click Submit, then go back up to Wi-Fi, click there, click Wi-Fi, and then click Submit. And that would tell the device, I want you to use Wi-Fi for your internet connectivity, and this is the network I want you to connect to. We can also go down here and uh, enter in information for our LTE uh, cellular connectivity. And that's one thing I want to mention here right now. Whenever you purchase the IoT Edge computer, it actually comes with a SIM card already installed in it that is provided by Hologram. If you don't have a cellular provider already that you're using, Hologram is an excellent choice. The SIM card is already installed, so all you need to get, do is go to hologram.io forward slash start, create an account, and then you'll enter in this number into your setup and then that's going to uh, claim this device to your hologram account and then you can pay for the cellular service at a very reasonable rate. So the next tab is the modem tab and this pretty much has everything to do with the cellular interface module. Now for the most part you're not going to need to change any of this information if you're using the hologram SIM card. Lastly, we have the Node Red tab. And this is where the magic really happens inside the IoT Edge computer. So here on the Node Red interface, we're in what they call the Flow Editor. 
Now we ship the IoT Edge computer with this example AWS Flow installed on it. Um, this is this is sort of a starting point, um, but you know it is a little bit complicated. Um, there's a there's a lot of things that you can do in Node Red, um, and I'm going to just briefly just touch on this here, but I can't possibly get into everything you can do on Node Red. So. If you're not familiar with Node-RED, I highly recommend going to ncd.io and searching resources for Node-RED. We have several articles there to help you get started. So rather than using this flow, what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click it and I'm going to disable it, click done, and then click deploy. Anytime you change something in Node-RED, you want to click deploy. That's actually going to make Node-RED activate the changes that you've made. So I'm going to click on this node, and I'm going to copy it. Now I'm going to create a new flow up here by clicking the plus button. I don't recommend deleting this flow. If you don't want to use it, then disable it, but there's a lot of stuff here that you can use. So I'm going to click plus to create a new flow, and now I'm going to paste that wireless gateway node in here. Now the wireless gateway node is where the data from all of our wireless sensors comes out of. So whenever the IoT Edge computer receives a wireless transmission from one of our sensors, that data is going to flow out of this gateway node. So as you can imagine, this is a fairly important uh, node. So next I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to grab a debug node. And I'm just simply going to drag it into my flow. And then I'm going to connect the output of this to here. I'm going to double click on this. And I'm going to have it output the complete message. Finally, I'm going to click Deploy. Now we're actually ready to start seeing information come from our sensors, just in a debug manner. So we want to click on this bug up here. And this is going to show us all of the messages that come out of this message node. So now I'm going to grab a sensor. And you can use any sensor that you want from our IoT or from our enterprise line of wireless sensors. This just happens to be a wireless temperature humidity sensor. It's one of our low cost sensors. Um, and it's, uh, it's really useful for demonstration purposes. Now you'll notice it has an antenna connection here. I'm not going to install the antenna because this is so close to the IoT Edge computer. I only recommend having the antenna, the 900 megahertz antenna connected to the IoT Edge computer, and the sensor whenever they're at least 10 feet apart. So I'm not going to install that right now. One thing you should know is that these sensors ship in the off position in order to conserve the battery inside of them. So I need to switch this sensor on because it's brand new. So I'm going to take a screwdriver. And I'm going to locate the switch right here, and I'm going to flip it on. Okay. Now that that sensor is on, it will immediately send a transmission out. Our computer, and take a look over here, I actually see I have a lot of messages because there's a lot of other engineers here in our office working with sensors as well. So if I, uh, if I start drilling down into one of these messages that was received, I can see all this information about the sensor. And if I look at the side of the sensor, I can actually see the unique serial number for this sensor. I can see that it ends in 6A10. Okay, So that's what we're looking for back in Node Red. Okay, So that one's not it. Uh, here we go, 6A110. I can see its address right here. And then I can see all kinds of the data that's being posted by the sensor. Like if I drill down into sensor data, I can see that the humidity is 59.01% and the temperature is 20.75 degrees Celsius. OK, so that's sort of just the first step. You know, if you're just getting your IoT Edge computer out of the box, you know, if you can get to this stage where you're seeing debug data come in over here on the right side, then you've essentially validated that all of your hardware is good and you're ready to actually move on and do something in your application. Now, I'd, I'd love to spend you know two hours here talking to you guys about what you can do with the IoT Edge computer. But 
It's just not in the scope of this video to be able to cover all that. I hope to create a lot more videos for the IoT Edge computer in the future about all the really cool things you can do with it and all the power Node Red has to offer. So stay tuned for that, and I'm going to try and post a bunch of those videos. So thanks for watching, and I hope this helped you with your IoT Edge computer. If you have any questions, be sure to contact us at community.ncd.io. We'll be happy to help. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.